So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, coming along. I'm just going to share my screen. takes a few minutes to get everything set up. Thank you for, for your patience. So this is a very short presentation on uh, why music is the career for you, uh, a subtitle of Changing the Music Industry. So to give you a bit of background about me, my name is Vic Bain. I have a very uh, deep understanding of the music industry now because I've spent about 25 years working in music. I think I've worked in every sector, everything from retail, music stores, to events, to representation and award ceremonies. I was the chief executive of the British Academy of Songwriters, Composers and Authors, also known as the IVAs, for six years and a board member of UK Music for um, that, same, that same time, six years. I'm now the current president-elect of the Incorporated Society of Musicians. I'm also the strategy director of a music charity called Attitude is Everything. I do um, business consulting with counterculture. I'm also researching for a PhD in women's careers in the music industry. And I train lots of companies on diversity issues, mainly, mainly based in the music industry. And I'm founder of the F List. And I'm gonna talk a bit, a bit more about that in, um, in a short while. So just to give you an understanding that um, uh, I'm very experienced in the, music, in the music industry and I really enjoy mentoring and giving people careers advice because we all started from, from nowhere. So what is it like for women working in music right now? So I'm going to cover some, um, some statistics for you. I don't know if you're familiar with these, with these statistics. We're going to look at the, um, the business side, the executive roles, and then we're going to look at the, the musician statistics as well. So there was some research published last year, which was, which was uh, uh, very enlightening, called A Seat at the Table by a woman called Nadia Khan. Now she's chair of AIM, the Association of Independent Music. And she found that only a quarter of CEOs of music trade bodies are now women. It used to be higher, I was one of them, um, but uh, it, seems, it seems to have gone, gone back slightly. And less than 10% of the chairs of these, of these boards were female. So that was last summer. I know that there have been some, some improvements um, since. So hopefully Nadia will be doing um, a, a, review, a, a review of that later this year. Also a very good um, resource for diversity re researchers is the UK Music Diversity Task Force biannual survey. So once every two years, they do an industry survey. And they have found now that um, half of all of the, the music workforce, half are, um, are, are it's evenly split men, men and women. But what they have found is that the, um, the older you get or, or, and the, the more senior positions and the top paying, paying jobs are, are predominantly still um, uh, men who who have those who have those roles. The government gender pay gap reports from two years ago showed that uh, in the music industry, women only receive about three quarters of the pay that men do, and are only are less than less than uh, a third in the top quartile jobs. So, there there is a, a long way to go really with the business side. And for the musicians, the creative side, we have, um, we have some statistics of um, label rosters and music publishing companies that um, uh, I conducted in, in 2019. Only 20% of artists signed to UK labels are women, but it's about a quarter of, of solo artists, which, which sort of tallies with the, um, the Brit Awards 
their album of the year. It's about a quarter uh, of those awards have gone, have gone to women. And on festival stages, which is something I do a lot of campaigning about, um, the BBC did a survey of over, sorry, of over 40, 40 years worth of um, festival stages and found that only 17% of those at the headline positions had gone to women or mixed acts. With writers and producers, the statistics are, are even worse. I found in my Counting the Music research in 2019, only 14% of signed songwriters and composers were, were female, which again sort of about tallies with the, the billboard chart and analysis done by a university called the Annenberg University, which is based in California, and they do brilliant media, media research. In 2017, the Music Producers Guild said that only 6% of their, of their members were female and only 3% of songs produced in the Billboard charts were um, produced by women. So it's not been historically a fantastic picture for women working in the music industry, but I just wanna say things are changing and really quickly as well. So I referred to the UK Music Diversity Workforce Survey, and they've been doing, um, I think they've released three now, one in 2016, one in 2018, one in 2020. And um, as I just mentioned, 50% of the overall workforce are um, male, female, but in the entry level jobs, so the age of 16 to 24 women are now two thirds of the workforce. So women are flooding into the music industry, which is, um, which is amazing, actually, actually, in a real, um, a real shift, and I think that's going to cause some, um, some big, some big changes in the music industry coming up in the next ten years. And I just wanted to review some education uh, statistics as well, because this is also sort of part of part of that pipeline, which I think is uh, is really important to note. So in 2019, there were nearly 35,000 students who, who studied music. So you know, I know you can do GCSE at any age, but, but mostly um, young adults of around 16 years old. 55% um, of all of those people taking music GCSE that summer were female, 55%. And, and I'm afraid to say, sorry, sorry about this, uh, 20, 20 men in the, in the audience, but the women, the young, the young women had done better in their grades every year for over a decade. And that's all available on the Ofqual website. And A-level uh, students, at uh, A-level it, it, it gets slightly more, very, very slightly, 52% more young men than women, just over 5,000 students studying A-level music. And the same, again, for over a decade, girls outperform boys in grades, with boys finally matching uh, in, 20, in 2019. And at degree level uh, music, which um, I think a lot, a lot of you in the audience will be, uh, will be students. I got this data from the Higher Education Statistics Authority, which was really, really interesting. In 2018, all music students together, so it's about 25,000 students studying all types of music related degrees, just over 44% were female. And there's some, um, you know, what we call gendering at subject level. So here you can really see the, the, the effect of, um, um, you know, music technology and composition being considered um, very male, very male dom dominated. But music performance, there you go, uh, undergrad level, 49% of, stu of students and 40% of, of, of students studying music business and theory. And at postgrad level, the statistics are, are, are better for women, which sort of reflects, I think, um, it, it, the fact that more and more women are getting more and more qualified and participating in education in, 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 in quite vast numbers now. So you can see here the composition post postgrad, it's a third, a third of all composition students are women. It's a fifth for music, music technology, which is great to see exactly equal for, mu for music performance. And in fact, two thirds of those studying music business and theory are female. So 
I'm going to talk a little bit about some historical uh, structural barriers and also what we can what we can do about them. The, the historical context of the music industry cannot be understated. We had a thousand years of what I call the musical patriarchy, where women were strictly forbidden from having music careers outside of the home. Those who did were extremely, generally extremely wealthy and privileged, or, or that they were protected by the church. So Hildegard von Bingen um, was a, a 13th century nun. Uh, so if the, you know if these women were in the church, they were they were allowed <laughs> to perform perform music outside of of their home. If they weren't protected by by money or or the church, they were considered very sexually dubious, um, and this for you know forced a, a lot of a lot of well a lot of women just didn't um, you know didn't have music careers, but some of them who wanted to, 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 to pursue careers as um, composers would often have their works published under other, other names of male relatives, so brothers and fathers uh, and husbands even, all used pseudonyms. So now the, um, the musicologists who, who are you know, researching this history are trying to unpick and unravel and, um, and make visible these women, these women who were extremely talented writing beautiful music but never, never had an opportunity to, to really shine. So these gender roles are deeply embedded in our society. They're very resistant to, to change. I mean, this obviously, um, you know, um, was not just music, this was across, across society as a whole. And our equality legislation is really very recent. In the past 50, 50 years or so, within my lifetime, we have had uh, waves, waves of equality legislation, but I think we're still very much in a transition period. And what we find in all jobs is um, segregation, into roles which are viewed as uh, feminine or, or, or masculine. W women are, in, in, and again, this is not just music, but in, in, in music, it has um, particular manifestations. So women are segregated into human resources, administration, marketing, roles which could be seen maybe as um, having a caring element. So teaching and music therapy or um, jobs which, which maybe have some more stability and that would um, that would sort of include um, orchestra roles as well. Men tend to be on tour, get into you know get into tour roles, or artist and repertoire, or IT technology. The mu music industry is really um, is really going going that way. Um, sorry, I saw somebody raise their hand. Maybe we can. Um, if you ask, if you remember your question, ask it at the end. We'll we'll, we'll come to that. Um, so the male music graduates go, you know, they become freelance musicians. Eighty percent of all uh, music musicians are freelance. Eighty percent, so it's a massive uh, massive number who are who are freelance. And the problem arises when these when these female roles are not as well paid or lack promotion potential. And there's also the motherhood penalty, which uh, probably you know, won't impact any of you for, for a few years yet, but, but when, you, when you do think about that, possibly in your 30s, in, in modern couples, the women still take on the traditional parenting uh, and child caring, child rearing roles. Over 50% of working, working mothers are part-time because they, they need to balance what's called this dual burden of um, bringing up a family and also their professional careers. Uh, unfortunately, though, you know, the, some of the structures by government uh, are not quite in place yet. For instance, self-employed parents cannot share parental leave. It's um, uh, only, the, only the mother who, if they're, if they're self-employed or freelance, can, can have um, maternity allowance. And this is still in the UK a cultural resistance to, to paternity leave, but not, not so in other countries. So there's a lot, a lot to learn from. And the music in, industry structures going on tour, for example, are not particularly flexible or family friendly. And what we see is women, women do leave the industry in their 30s and 40s. 
And the final barrier I'm going to discuss is unconscious bias. So I think, you know, there's, there's certainly, well, a thousand years of musical patriarchy. The culture of the music industry is male, especially musicians. So biases and stereotypes are, are, are very natural. We all have them. They, you know, developed with our big, with our big brains in order to help us make quick decisions and to, to survive in our modern complex societies are maybe less helpful. And we tend to recruit in our, our, our own image. And uh, there are still some deeply held biases towards women in leadership. But I, I want to say, and with the statistics we saw earlier, the industry is changing. So I want to give you some, some hope and some good advice about your career in, in music. Well, there's loads that people can be, can be doing, and there's a lot of campaigning to, to get government to improve legislation, to extend their pay gap reporting, to change uh, pr provisions around parental leave, to have greater protections for, um, for those suffering from harassment and abuse in the workplace and funding opportunities as well. Get gender pay gap reporting, uh, which is supposed to happen every, every, every year. It didn't really happen properly last year because of, because of COVID, but hoping it can get underway again properly this, this year. There's also talk about extending it to ethnicity pay gap reporting. And shining a light on these figures is really, really important. And I think the, the 2010 Equalities Act was, uh, was, a, was a, fantastic, a fantastic piece of legislation and was really helping to shine some transparency on what's, what's, what's going on. And music businesses, I call on all music businesses to support one positive female initiative a, a, a year and to get labels and publishers to sign more fem female musicians and composers. I, you know, I, I do a lot of work with um, a lot of organizations and I'm training them on all of these issues, equality, diversity, inclusion issues, and there's a real appetite out there. You know, music, um, music companies really want to improve and do, and do better. And there's initiatives such as Key Change. So he, here you can see over 400 music organizations across the EU have signed up to Key Change and loads of festivals and labels and so on. And they are, all of those organizations are committed to having 50-50 gender, gender balance on their rosters, which is brilliant. And education, there's lots to be done with improving entry routes into the music industry for, for music graduates. And uh, I think I've given talks to, I don't know, maybe 25 or 30 universities and conservatoires over, over the past um, 15, 15, 16 months. And they, and they all are, you know, have a great duty of care towards, towards all of their students and graduating students. And there's loads of information available online as well to sort of help with that, with that transition. And I'm sure you're getting really good um, careers, careers advice and support from, from your university. Uh, we need to keep on doing a lot, a lot more research, especially with uh, early, early career res research, and, and you know, looking at uh, intersectional issues, issues as well with ethnicity, disability, age, and class in, in, in the music industry, and all of all of that research, such as this this conference uh, here, which I, I might be uh, talking talking at this September, looking looking at women's participation in in music. So it's really important we know what's going on. And specific careers advice for, for women wanting to establish and you know, start, start their careers in music. Well, first of all, I would say, be prepared, be prepared. And in fact, listening to this presentation or other presentations that I've, that I've done around counting the music industry, where we look at the data and the statistics that, um, that I, I highlighted at the start of this, this presentation. It's really important that you know What's, what's, what's going on, be prepared. And the second thing I would say is know your rights. Uh, organizations such as the ISM, the Incorporated Society of Musicians, which uh, I'm a, a board director of and, and the president elect 
for now. They are a fantastic membership organization that they do um, free legal advice and it's sort of unlimited advice, you know, which I think is just so important. They've got contracts and uh, insurance and, you know, and advice on how to, um, how to develop your professional career. So really reach out to these organizations and, um, and, and, and uh, participate. Also, there's a turn of mentoring and networking opportunities. Um, so all of these here are listed on my F-List website. I've got um, a sister organizations page, and there's, there's now about 50 organizations with links to all of, these, all of these companies, and many of them run mentoring programs. I would really recommend you sign up to a structured mentoring program. So there's, a, there's one called I Like Networking. There's one called the Cat's, Cat's Mother. And uh, yes, a whole, a whole bunch of, um, of other organ organizations that, you know, they run events and all sorts of things. So find out about all of these organizations and get, get involved and sign up to them. And for female musicians, I would also strongly recommend that you create a listing on, uh, this is an initi initiative that I founded and, and set up last year called the F List for Music. And basically, it's a directory. It has it has now over five thousand one hundred listings on on it. You just go onto the website and create your own listing, and commissioners, bookers, festival organisers, people in the business are using it now as a resource to find and book fem female musicians. And this is just a, an, an, an example, the top of the top of one one listing of a woman who created her page this week. And we've also, uh, you can sign up to the mailing list and we run events uh, about all sorts of aspects of being, uh, being a musician, professional musician. So please do check out that website. And another thing that uh, I encourage all musicians and writers to do is apply for funding. There's lots of funding out there and uh, you might not get it first at first time, but you can, you know, you can keep applying, keep applying, and somebody will give you some money to, to support you in your, your career. Help musicians do a funding wizard on their, on their website. So, so do have a, have a look and keep applying. And my final uh, piece of advice is make the change. You know, you are now two thirds of, the, of, the, uh, of those who are under 24 in the, in, in, the, in the music industry, which is just fantastic. It's now, you know, you are the future. It's up to you to, to change, change the music industry. And there you go. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much for that, for that comment, Sophie. And um, I know somebody somebody put her hand up earlier to um, ask a, ask a question, but I think I was in I was in mid flow, so I missed I missed that. Does anybody have any any questions now about um, about anything? We've we've flown through we've flown through quite a lot. I know I know I can't hear you, but you you might be able to to write something down. No questions at all. Or how about anybody anybody telling me about if you know what are they still a student or are they um, are they working in the music industry now? Nobody at all. <laughs> you're, you're a graduate. You're a graduate. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. So if you're, if you're a graduate, are you a musician? Or are you working in the, the business side? Now working in the music industry. Well, that's, that's excellent. Quinta Boom and Bristol, but not, not in performance, yes. Well, the business, the business side, um, I think, is really um, is really changing. As I, as, as I said, more women flooding, flooding in. 
and hopefully in a few years you'll rise up the management structures and start and start running running the industry cactus city studio excellent ah brilliant and studio studios hopefully hopefully changing as well going to be running some um some weekend training opportunities for female musicians but with an all-female team in um in some studios in in london once uh, once once it's all opened up hopefully later later in the summer okay well if we've got no questions i'm going to stop recording and um and say thank you thank you very much to everybody who who attended i hope that was that was useful and best of luck with your music careers thank you thank you bye bye thanks sophie